I always talk about Game Boy shells, but I rarely ever delve into, um, like, cart shells. Um, for the most part, cart shells, th there hasn't been enough variants on the subject for me to really talk about, but that that's kind of not so true anymore. Um, you know, it used to be a few years ago when I started this hobby, you had two choices when you wanted a shell for one of your favorite carts. You had the OEM shell or the cheap aftermarket shell. But that's not so true anymore, is it? This card is aftermarket. If I were to just hand you one of these cards and ask you, which one is the OEM cart? Would you be able to tell me? Would you be able to look at one of these cards and say with certainty, which one is the real one and which one is the fake one? Well, Sure, probably. Given long enough, you'd probably come to the conclusion that this one is the fake one. But that was a trick question. That's not totally fair. Um, for the people who are going to listen to this and say, hey, that's not cool. These aftermarket carts are going to start driving down the value of our real carts. Or, you know, I, I don't want to get scammed, blah, blah, blah. No one's going to sell you a cart that looks like this. That's not going to happen. These cart shells are a thing now, yes. Um, you can grab them, uh, this is a different color, but grab the bare cart shell, and then I took a real Pokemon Crystal label, not, not an aftermarket reprint or reproduction or anything. This is off an actual cart that had a damaged shell. And I also shoved it in a shell with a regular like an actual game cart, not like an aftermarket reproduction. So this cart to build cost one Pokemon Crystal plus the actual donor cartridge. Now, the Pokemon Crystal that I used for this thing, um, I did fix it, and I actually ended up transplanting the board into one of those dual-post Japanese Pokemon Crystals, and um, everything was all good and well until the fire niche, I mean, until the cart shell cracked. And unfortunately that seems all too common with these um, Pokemon crystal shells. The plastics in them seem to be awful brittle. So I, for one, am very thankful that there are now aftermarket options. Um, the sparkle density seems to be quite a bit lower, but it's still, you know, it's, it's still really good, especially when you compare that this was our most recent option for aftermarket cart shells for Pokemon Crystal. This is horrible. This is fantastic. Now, granted, I I really think they should have done away with the um, the trademark logo. Oh, of course, I got a hair under the label. Oh, that's the worst. Um, gosh darn cat. Um, I, I really wish they would have gone done away with the labeling, the logos, but it is what it is. They opted to go full double whammy, put the Nintendo logo and the Game Boy Color logo logo on these things. Uh, whereas, whereas if we compare this to an OEM one, have that same logo, Game Boy Color. It's a little bit harder to read, um, at least on this particular finish on the regular Game Boy Color. I have so many cart shells off to the side, I'm sorry. Mm, there it is. On the regular Game Boy Color shell, it's quite a bit easier to read, but it's still... Still hard. Um, and on the back, we have the regular Nintendo logo. So the text is pretty accurate. It's... I haven't noticed any real differences. The biggest difference, aside from any perceived color changes, uh, this is a lighter blue, and like I said, the the sparkle density is a little bit lower. But, you know, if I, if I take this one away, you know, I just set this down on my desk, you're going to look at this and go, yeah, no, that's a regular Pokemon Crystal. Maybe, maybe your Uncanny Valley triggers just a little bit, 
but you dismiss it because it looks good enough, right? Um, and yeah, for the most part, it is. One of the biggest differences is that they added this little notch in the corner here. Regular Game Boy Color carts do not have that notch. Uh, this notch gives it compatibility with the original Game Boy console. The original Game Boy console, you flip the power switch on and it would slide a lever over into the cart. Um, and without that notch, you couldn't use this cart in a Game Boy, original Game Boy. Um, now, for actual legitimate Game Boy Color games, that was intentional because they weren't compatible with this console. With these cart shells, you could put anything in this shell, and it may or may not be compatible with an original Game Boy. Um, for example, thought this was Pokemon Crystal? Think again. It's not Pokemon Crystal. But, I, I mean, I, it, it is a flash card. I could flash whatever I want to it. But these are the newest options. Of course, let us, let's review some of the other options. Uh, now, of course, we still have these cheapo pieces of junk available. I hate them, but they exist. They're there. Uh, I don't think they're ever going away. Uh, you have to be careful. These come in two different styles. They come in reproduction style, which has the screw post close to the top. On an OEM style cart, it should be much closer to the bottom. And then they make this exact same thing crappy mold and all with the screw post in the correct position. But there's still weird stuff like these um, little supports molded in, little dots, stuff like that. Uh, I, They're all right, but this one in particular, you can't fit an OEM cart in there. Um, if you're a proponent, a fan of uh, Inside Gadget's flash carts, um, if you have any of their older ones, they were designed to use that cheapo, that same cheapo shell. And uh, unfortunately, you can't really upgrade them because of where the screw post hole is. But if you have any of their newer flash carts, they come with the, um, the OEM style aftermarket reproduction shells. And these are all the same make as far as shells go. They're not great. The newer ones, the transparent ones especially, are a lot better than the older ones and the gray ones especially. But as far as options go, I think they are the lowest quality out there. You can do better. This is... Sorry, Alex. I'm not, I'm not trying to pick on you in particular. Um, these are just the examples I had handy because I love your flashcards and I keep buying them. Um, I have a lot of flashcards. It's becoming a genuine problem. After that, uh, we have some relatively recent carts from Retro Modding. They are quite a bit higher quality. Uh, yeah, there we go. That's one of these. Um, I have two right here. Both of them have a flash cart in them. The cheapo AliExpress ones just say game on them. There's no trademark violation or anything. That's one of the nice things about them, and that's probably why Alex uses them. This won't get stuck in customs. There is no trademark violation. This is pretty similar, uh, but like I said, these are from retro modding. They say game pack instead of just game. Uh, it looks like it's an original mold. The actual like quality of the cart shell, it's a little creaky if you um, like if you try and flex it, it is more flexible and it doesn't feel as nice as an OEM cart shell, but it is a significant improvement over these junk things over here. Um, I was very pleased when they came out with these, especially because they come in so many colors. Uh, I have green, I have that one. Uh, that one wait no that's one of these and I dyed it never mind but this is one of retro moddings um, they're good shells they're not they're not great but they're certainly good shells uh, I'm, I'm pleased with them I'll shoot a link down in the description um, they do actually fit quite nicely in a Game Boy nice and flush uh, on some aftermarket shells, they're a little bit proud, uh, but these are, are, of course, not the only option. There is one more option. We have kitsch bent shells, which 
these are something else entirely. These aren't based on any design. They just, they came up with their own thing and they went with it and it works. I like them. Personally, I don't bother with a label on them because they're unique enough that I can usually remember what's in there. But one problem with these is they are a little bit proud when you insert them in a Game Boy. The, I believe they're designed to be used with the Kitsch Bent DMG shell specifically. So if you're reshelling your original Game Boy with one of their shells, it will be flush in that console, but that's about it. They're a little bit proud and everything else, but it's not enough that it's a really big problem, I think. And they do fit really nicely. Um, one problem though, when it comes to flash carts in particular, is that they don't quite clear the flash chip on the bottom and you do have to do a little bit of cutting on the cart shell itself, but once it's trimmed, works pretty nicely. Uh, and then as I began talking, we have these brand new ones. Um, I like, I like these. I ordered quite a few. They come in a lot of colors as well, and I wanted them. I wanted them. I want. Yeah, this one, I believe this is a glow in the dark, or is it just clear? No, nope, that looks glow in the dark, doesn't it? I think there's too much ambient lighting and I don't have it charged up enough. I will leave that under a light for a moment. We'll come back to it. Um, and that's pretty much it. The only other options are, you know, tracking down an OEM shell in a color you might want and then pulling the, uh, pulling the shell for use with, for example, your own flash cart, which is what I did here. I got an old OEM cart that I had ended up using as a donor for probably a flash cart and um, cut some holes and made it suitable for use with my EverDrive. I even drilled out a hole approximately where the LED is and then filled it with epoxy so that we have an LED window. And it works extremely nicely. I'm very pleased with it. Uh, the only problem in this case is I wasn't sure how this would come out so I used one of my um, like junk pile carts and there are some burn marks here in it because it was in the junk pile. Uh, well that's why it was sent to the junk pile but it is a legit EverDrive from uh, Stone Age Gamer. This isn't like a clone or anything. They are designed to use I suppose there's an extra case here an extra shell the ones made by uh, Crix, the EverDrive shells. Uh, he makes EverDrive specific shells with the holes already cut in them. And if you peel off this label back here, I believe they say EverDrive on them. Um, the mold got stolen and they sell these on AliExpress now as well. Uh, so if you get a clear shell in a Game Boy Color style um, casing with the uh, convex grip up here um you probably get one that says everdrive um but the uh concave style upper which is the original game boy style shell those are still an original mold but i kind of want to reshell my everdrive again pop it in one of these new shells because i don't know a video where i'm just talking about shells is kind of lame Especially when I have so many options for uh, install there. This, they come in so many colors. I couldn't decide, so I just bought several, including multiple Pokemon crystals. Uh, but I also grabbed a few colors that I thought might be interesting to compare and contrast a little or show off. Um, this one in particular I was interested in because I wanted to see how it compared with a regular Game Boy Color shell. Um, for those that aren't aware, Game Boy Color shells, <gasps> there it is. Here's one. Da, 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 da. This is an OEM Game Boy Color shell. They're not the same color, unfortunately. The uh, aftermarket one is a little bit lighter, but it's still a good color. The OEM Game Boy Color shells are like a smoke, dark, black-ish, uh, but they're transparent enough that they just look clear and that's fine. 
uh, but this one is a little bit lighter. So unfortunately it's not quite the same thing and it's not the full clear one, as you can see. But it is what it is. Oh wait, I think this might have been the Game Boy Color one. Still not quite the same color, but darn close. Let's see how it looks with a similar cart in there. I've got this flash cart sitting on my desk because I forgot it was in that shell. Uh, da, 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 da. So yeah, not quite the same color. A little bit darker, it appears, but a darn good substitute, if I say so myself. Now, unfortunately, this flash cart does not work, so can't do much with it, um, but we can still look at it. We can still pretend it works and do cool stuff with it. Um, the only other option is if you're feeling particularly creative is you can make your own, which is what I've done here. I made these in the style of OEM carts, uh, but I didn't use any of the trademark logos. I just left the back completely blank. And then on the front, instead of putting Game Boy Color, I, I put that. If you know, you know. If not, well, there's an Easter egg for you to look up, if you can. Uh, and then I made these as well, which are more or less the same thing, just a little bit easier to 3D print or machine if it comes to that. Um, and I put different text on there. Um, again, if you know, you know. But, you know, they're not... They're not widely available, so it's not exactly a fair comparison. I did not share the source files, and these aren't being sold. But the point is, it is very possible to do this. And if you're uh, comfortable enough in a CAD program, it's not too difficult to get something like this done. Um, again, two completely different models, two completely different purposes. Both of these are 3D printed, by the way. All of this is plastic injection molded. These are 3D printed, so that that could be a pretty big uh, consideration for you. Um, but they're pretty nice. Uh, this one in particular, I believe, is from Shapeways. I don't remember the material, though. This one in particular is from PCBWay, uh, printed with their UTR transparent. I think UTR 8100? Don't quote me on that, but it's the UTR and then transparent option. Unfortunately, they've gone up in price quite a bit, so of all of these carts, these two were by far the most expensive, and this one doesn't even have a working flash cart in it, but it is what it is. Um, this one doesn't have a working flash cart either. That's not a flash cart. That is some random Game Boy Color game, but nonetheless, getting distracted. You can grab some, do a little bit of a mix and match if you want. They'll all match up nicely. Though, not necessarily the best color combo. I dig it. I'm really pleased with them. They fit really nicely. And I've gone all this way without... See, I got them mixed up. I, I wasn't going off memory. I had to actually check. Um, they do fit more or less flush. They are rounded on top, so on the sides, they're a little bit shy, and on the middle, they're a little bit proud. But it's the same with OEM, at least in a Game Boy Pocket. Um, I don't think any Game Boy has... A rounded top though so I think they're gonna all be like that but regardless it's not it's not sticking out and not like that kitsch bent cart um, I like it I think they're really good the uh, biggest concern at this point is labels like you buy these carts and there's there's no labels it's not a whole lot that can be done about that um, you can try printing your own stuff, but unless you own a decent quality inkjet printer, you're not going to have too much luck. Uh, I'm lucky, and I was able to get a friend to print this particular label for me, 
And I have a few more labels that were printed by another friend here. Do, 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 do. Let's get them out. But for just onesies and twosies, I would recommend personally uh, just hitting up Etsy and seeing if you can if you can get something printed. Uh, I'm not gonna link anyone in particular because I can't recommend anyone in particular. And if they are someone who sells like reproduction labels or something, that's a cat and mouse game that I don't want to play because Nintendo will shut them down. Especially, you know, I, I link to them, Nintendo's gonna shut them down, but not not saying correlation, um, or rather causation. Not saying causation, just saying, you know, I don't want to keep trying to replace links. But anyway, yeah, you, know, you, you can get some labels. Pretty good stuff. And I have another one. Oh, no, I don't. Oh, well, I guess we'll just use this one. It's one of my favorite labels, anyhow. You can jam that on the uh, crystal cart. Put it put in a uh, flash cart there. I, w I will probably rip this label off and do something with it that's not Pokemon Crystal. Probably put that label on it. Because flash carts are fun got so many of these Jesus things but these are of course uh, OEM shells donors um, dual dual post instead of single post so that you can put art on the back these are Japanese crystal shells there is no aftermarket replacement for these but this is what they look like normally this was an original Japanese crystal that I converted to a flash card. And this one still has the previous owner's name on it. Oh, I have to update that. There have been quite a few updates since 2.0. But good stuff for uh, custom flashcards. And for those wondering, building three, these three carts is more expensive than just buying one EverDrive. And it's functionally the same, except that this on each of these only holds one game at a time whereas this holds as many as you care to put on your SD card actually I think three carts these three were cheaper but not by much flash carts are not a cheap build um, where are we at there are a few other Game Boy shells, like if you want to track down some rare Game Boy Color games, you can get these things, uh, which come in a lightish blue shell instead of that um, smoke shell. These are quite a bit rare. They're probably a little bit desirable. Uh, I know they're rare. I don't know if they're valuable. This I didn't pay too much for this one, but I still grabbed it anyway because it was the only one I saw. The blue cart designates um, that it was compatible with the uh, cell phone modem that was only a thing in Japan so you'll have to import a cart if you want one of these but they exist. Um, you can also of course get white carts in the form of the Nintendo Power Cart or Tamagotchis. I think this is a mixed cart. You can tell the wear doesn't exactly match on the front and the back. The front is original, the back is a replacement from the Tamagotchi, but it's still original. Of course, you can get the Kirby Tilt and Tumble. These are dual post carts, which work nicely for uh, Japanese Pokemon Silver replacements, except that they're pretty, they're still pretty unique. Um, and then, of course, there's the Command Master cart, which is the same as that Kirby Tilt and Tumble, except blue instead of pink. And I think that's about it as far as carts go. Uh... Oh, here we go. Here is one of those... Um... This is an aftermarket shell. This is not from Crix. Yeah, if we flip it around, what does it say on the back there? Crix.com, EverDrive. This is a stolen mold. Um, don't necessarily recommend 
contributing to that uh, industry uh, with the stolen cart shell. Oops, see doodle. But I didn't know what I was ordering until it arrived because they advertised this clear shell and then shipped me this one instead. But it is what it is. I already have it. No sense getting rid of it. Um, these ones are the bee's knees. What else we got? I suppose one more thing is worth mentioning. The clone ever drives will also fit in a, uh, see, that one says ever drive too. Uh, the clone ever drives will also fit in OEM shells as long as you cut a slot for the SD card and cut a slot uh, right here-ish. Actually, I don't think the clone needs it. The OEM needs another slot right here so that you can clear that warning, uh, the low power LED or SD indicator. It does both, uh, but the clones, I don't think need that. Easy Flash, on the other hand, opted to put the screw post in a weird spot. So if you want to replace your cart, you're going to have to do something totally custom. Sorry about that, but it is what it is. Anyway, what say we make a custom shell for the EverDrive? I wanted to do the crystal shell, but honestly, I think I might save it for another flash cart because they just, they're so good. I kind of want to save this one now as like a, uh, as a bait cart, I guess. And then I'll use this one for a flash cart. Uh, I don't know. I can always change my mind later. Got plenty of these Jesus things. Let's look at this one. It is glowing. There's just too much light in here. Ta-da. Glow in the dark. One of my concerns with glow in the dark though is they are typically more brittle than the other materials, but this one in particular seems fine, I guess. Hmm? Um, you know what, screw it. Let's do the Pokemon Crystal. Why not? Oh, no way. This already has some of the slots cut. So when I cut this shell originally for this Heart. Not a perfect fit. There we go. I had to file down this up here. And there's that slot I was talking about to clear the LED. Um, I don't know that we'll need to file that down. Oh no, we still will. That's a shame. That's a gold darn shame. That's okay though. So if we want to drop that in there, we'll do a quick test fit. It does fit. But that is, that's a weird look, isn't it? That's fine. So let us do some marking here. I need there we go. I'm gonna do the marking with a knife. So at the bottom of the cart I have seated in the shell and in position and the SD card is sticking out. I am going to take my knife right up next to the SD card and mark the shell. I am also going to put one mark. Ooh, wait, no, I shouldn't do that in the bottom. Never mind, because that needs to go on the top. Oop. And now I have that mark there, that mark there. Let's get this prepped. I'm going to clear my desk so that I 
and my dust is a little bit more under control. But basically, we just want to copy that cutout for the SD card. And uh, you know what? I think I might just use the Dremel for this so that I can get nice, clean, smooth cuts. Uh, for the home gamers that don't have a uh, ghetto mill setup, which is I have a rotary tool stuck in a tool stand and it has a little lever. Um, and I have milling bits in it, which almost makes it a mill. Almost, not quite. Highly recommend just picking away at the shell with a needle file. More or less just do this slowly until you get there. It is a long process. I'm going to use the power tools because I have the power tools. In the case of the SD card though, I lost my second mark. I think I, I think I just filed that mark off because I wasn't paying enough attention. Almost. Okay. So that cutout clears, but we'll need to cut this part off too. And I'm going to go do that on the Dremel. I'll be right back. Cheddar! That was one of the easiest ever drive case mods I've done yet. Nice, clean. On the uh, bottom half of the shell, all I had to do was cut out that slot. I should clean up the swarf on these edges just a little bit, but because I used a rigid tool stand plunging down, I got nice, clean, right angles, which I did not have on the original cart slot, or cart. The only thing you might be seeing there is a little bit of swarf that I have to clean up. A deburring tool is uh, proper. The proper tool for what I'm doing right now, but blade will work too. And then on the top, all I had to do was bring down that little protrusion right there. And that was it. There's, there's already a uh, cutout to clear the cart slot. I don't know if that's what, what it's intended for, but it almost already, already cleared, as you can see there. And it clears the LED, which is important because the very first week I had this card, I put it in a new case. This thing has notably very little wear on it, uh, almost none on the bottom there because like that was like one of the first things I did. I don't like this label, I don't like this style case, so I case modded it. Um, and I didn't realize that a slot needed to be cut in this style shell, and the first thing I did was I put that down, Closed it, I heard a crunch, I didn't think anything of it, and uh, I sealed it up. Little did I know, I had completely removed that LED from the board. But, now I have a brand new shell. Turns on. We have our indicator LED nice and visible still. And if we start a game, no idea what I just started, but it doesn't matter. We should still be able to click the shell. Back to menu. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, there is one more cart shell option that I did just remember and have not mentioned before. I don't necessarily like it, but you know, teach your own. BoxyPixel does machine aluminum cart shells that you can use. Uh, I have heard mixed reports of compatibility issues. Um, the uh, 
when you're machining something out of aluminum, you have a spinning round tool. So this is a screwdriver bit, but for example, let's pretend that's a drill bit. How do we get this drill bit into that interior corner to give us a perfect 90 degree angle? Uh, the answer is you don't. So there's always going to be a little bit of a, uh, th there's never going to be a perfect 90 degree interior angle on anything machined. The only exception is on some corners if you have something like a five axis machine where instead of just approaching it from the top, you know, you can rotate it and then come at it. And that's how you'd get that interior angle, 90 degrees on the outside there. You'd approach it from this side or from the top, I suppose it doesn't matter. Uh, but if you were to just approach it from the top, you'd have it rounded. But anyway, the point, point being, um, his carts are not machined on a five axis, which isn't a shot at him. It's just truth of the matter. And there are some interior radii that do interfere with some carts. Uh, so if we take this, for example, this one actually barely fits as is. You can see, uh, it's a bad example because it's a flash cart, but you'll have to trust me when I say it complies with OEM dimensions, Mostly, this one is a little, just a hair oversized, but it's prototype. Um, but you can see that fits right up in that corner. If this upper corner were rounded, it wouldn't fit. Um, Alex, the saint that he is, from Inside Gadgets, that's not the cart. This is the cart. No, but that's not the right one. On his newer carts, he has the corners rounded off so that they fit. Not this one. I'm sorry, I was mistaken. Unless his clear one is newer than this one. Where is it? There it is. Yeah, you can see they're a little bit rounded there. If it focuses. And I think that solves the compatibility issue. Otherwise, you can literally just take your PCB and take that file I mentioned and then shave it down at the edges. There's nothing important at the edge, trust me. Uh, but actually, fun fact, look at that interior corner. The edge cuts on these things are machined as well, so no interior corners are 90 degrees on here either. Neat. The more you know, right? Uh, but anyway, I think that's all I got. I'm really pleased with these. Now I just need to go through my collection and uh, pick a label for the EverDrive. I could get something else custom printed, but I don't know what to do. You can use one of a kind, Warlocked. He says one of a kind when he literally has two. <laughs> uh, I can use that RGRS sticker. I can use my Crystal Clear sticker, Tetris sticker, Dangan GB sticker. Another crystal clear sticker. Hmm. Decisions. Or I can use the SP Macro sticker. Who knows? I'll figure something out. Ooh, or, let me turn that off. Kill that. One more option. I take one of the, I take the sticker off the old clone EverDrive. I think it's gonna need some heat. Um, and I'll use that. I think that'll be nice. I suppose this thing could use a new shell, huh? Or I could just put it in the EverDrive shell. Doesn't matter. Anyway, that's all I got. Thanks for watching. Um, I will shoot some links down in the description for these carts. Uh, these high quality ones for the Game Boy Color in particular. <clears throat> Probably a little bit biased because I got these from Retro Game Repair Shop and I got them at a nice discount because we, we have an agreement going on. Um, but I will shoot a link down in the description. They are fantastic carts. The other ones I have, messy desk, messy desk. These guys, um, I got these from Retro Modding. Uh, I don't know what the stock is looking like. Last I checked, it's a little bit on the low side. Um, some of the colors are out of stock and I don't know what their plans are for restocking, but, 
I believe they have in stock notifications. Highly recommend signing up. How weird is that? <laughs> you know, it kind of works though. Oh, and these do come with the uh, OEM style screws. I just uh, lost them. I, right before the video, I dumped them all out uh, without even paying attention and screws are gone. Um, but it is what it is. Um, I'm not, I will throw a link to the Kitsch Bent Carts if their store is not closed because they close their store so freaking often. Um, I'm not going to bother throwing a link to the AliExpress carts because they're low quality, they suck, and half of them are clones, uh, stolen molds anyway, so deal with it. But I don't know. I think it's pretty good. Uh, next time, next toy on next week's episode of Dragon Ball. Um, maybe we'll cover some uh, Game Boy Advance shells. Some neat stuff there too. Anyway, 40 minutes just to talk about shells. Jesus. I'll catch you all next time.